When we say I, we do not refer to our body, but to that by which our body lives. What is then this I? Please continue watching to find out more. Everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. This insightful saying by Leo Tolstoy is a valuable reminder for all of us to reflect inwardly. The renowned 19th century Russian author suggested that we ask ourselves what God really wants us to do. As Leo Tolstoy said, in the name of God, stop a moment, seize your work, look around you. A novel by Tolstoy is not a work of art, but a piece of life, stated Matthew Arnold, a 19th century British poet and critic. In addition to his renowned epic novels, Leo Tolstoy wrote essays and letters that conveyed the spiritual truths he came to realize in life. Along with adopting and promoting the vegetarian diet, he became deeply interested in spirituality and living by the ethical teachings of Christ. The concepts he conveyed through his writings about peace and the fulfillment of God's will greatly influenced 20th century leaders like Mahatma Gandhi and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Supreme Master Ching Hai once spoke of Tolstoy in a group meditation session with our association members in July 1997 in Los Angeles, USA. Tolstoy was the practitioner, you know? That's why when you read his story, most the story about spirituality, about God, and very happy, very positive. It's very good to read him, huh? to read his book. You try. If you haven't, you try. You can read more, huh? Such things are very good for you. We would like to share an insightful excerpt of Volume 1, The Soul from The Pathway of Life, a collection of Tolstoy's philosophies on religion, life, death and more. The Soul The intangible, invisible, incorporeal something, which gives life to all that is living, we call God. The same intangible, invisible, incorporeal principle which is separated by the body from all else, and of which we are conscious as self, we call the soul. What is the soul? A man who has attained old age has passed through many vicissitudes. He was first an infant, then a child, an adult, an old man. But no matter how he has changed, he always calls himself I. This I has always remained the same. His I was the same in his infancy, in his period of maturity, in his old age. His unchanging I we call the soul. If a man imagines that what he sees all around, the infinite universe, is just as he sees it, he is very much in error. All the material things man knows only through his individual sense of sight, hearing and touch. Were his senses different, the whole world would appear different. Therefore, we do not know. We cannot know this material world as it is. Only one thing we truly and fully know, namely our soul. The I is spiritual. When we say I, we do not refer to our body, but to that by which our body lives. What is then this I? We cannot put into words what this I is, but we know it better than anything else that we know. We know that but for this I, we should know nothing. There would be nothing in the world for us, and we ourselves should not be. When I think about it, 
It's more difficult for me to understand what my body is than what my soul is. As close as it is to me, the body is something foreign. It is the soul that is mine. If a man is not conscious of the soul within himself, it does not prove that he has no soul, but only that he has not yet learned to be aware of the soul within himself. Until we have realized what is within us, what good is it to us to know what is beyond us? And is it possible to know the world without knowing ourselves? Can he who is blind at home possess sight when he is abroad? Just as a candle cannot burn without a fire, man cannot live without a spiritual life. The spirit dwells in all men, but not all men are aware of this. Happy is the life of him who knows this, and unhappy is life who does not know it. The Soul and the Material World We have measured the earth, the sun, the stars, and the depths of the sea. We have penetrated the bowels of the earth in search of gold. We have explored rivers, the mountains of the moon. We have discovered new stars and know their dimensions. We have filled up abysses. We have built cunning machinery. Not a day passes, but we have new inventions. Is there a limit to our capabilities? But something, the most important thing is lacking. What that is, we do not know ourselves. We are like babes. The infant feels that something is wrong. But what or why, he does not know. Something is wrong, because we know much that is superfluous, but do not know the most needful thing, our own self. We do not know what dwells within us. If we knew and remembered what dwells within us, our lives would be altogether different. All that is material in this world, we cannot know the true nature thereof. Only the spiritual that is within us is fully known to us, namely that of which we are conscious, and which does not depend upon our feelings or our thoughts. There are no limits. There can be no limits to the world in any direction. No matter how distant a thing may be, behind the most distant there are other objects still more distant. The same is true of time. Back of thousands of years that have passed, there had been thousands and thousands of previous years. And therefore, it's clear that man cannot possibly grasp what the material world is today, what it has been, nor what it will be. What then can man understand? Only one thing, for which there is no need of either space or time, namely, his soul. Cheerful viewers, thank you for joining us on today's selections from The Pathway of Life by Leo Tolstoy, Vegetarian, Volume 1, The Soul, Part 1 of 2, on Words of Wisdom.